You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make an extremely powerful arc lighter. If you have never done a project involving high voltage before, do not have this one be your first. The arcs that this circuit produces are going to be very high voltage and probably lethal. So rather than having this one be your first, go and build this pocket Jacobs ladder that I made in a previous video. Although this pocket Jacobs ladder is still pretty dangerous, it probably won't kill you if it shocks you. So actually, since this is lethal, I should probably say don't try this at home unless you have lots of experience and know what you're doing. So anyways, with that said, let's get building the circuit. This is the circuit that we're going to be using. The name of this circuit is dubbed the ZVS driver. Now I did not invent the circuit myself, however I cannot find who the original creator is, but if I do find find it out, it'll be linked first thing in the description. But anyways, you can see the values for the components that we need are going to be listed right here. As for these two MOSFETs, I'm going to be using the IRFP250N. However, if I had it, I'd be using the IRFP260N because it can handle a bit more. And this over here is going to be a flyback transformer that I'll show you guys how to wind in a little bit. So anyways, let's get building the circuit. This capacitor here is supposed to have a capacitance of around 0.6 microfarads. So for that, I'm going to connect these two capacitors here, each rated at around 0.33 microfarads. So connected in parallel, this should give me around 0.66 microfarads. Next, I'm going to be using this inductor. This inductor has 32 turns of copper wire around this core, and I measured it to have an inductance of 130 microhenries. However, based at what I found on the internet, your inductor can be anywhere from 40 microhenries to 200 microhenries for this to work optimally. So I'm going to go ahead and insert it right here onto this perf board next to the two capacitors. Next I have two of these IRFP250N MOSFETs. Now the reason that they look all weird at the bottom is because when I salvaged them out of something, the ends came off, so I soldered these copper wires to them to act as the terminals. Now from left to right, these transistors go gate, drain, source. Using the circuit, this is going to be our gate, this is going to be our drain, and this is is going to be our source. Notice that the other MOSFET over here, however, goes gate, drain, source. Also, by the way, these schematic symbols for these MOSFETs are drawn a little bit wrong, so really they're supposed to be drawn like this. You're also going to want to put a heat sink like I have on these MOSFETs. Since they're going to be passing quite a bit of power through them, this will let it so they can dissipate the heat a lot better. Okay, so now I've inserted the two MOSFETs into the perf board. As you can see, I have them facing each other. This way, these MOSFETs will be in those two different configurations that we showed on the schematic. Next, I have 2 watt 470 ohm resistors. These resistors are going to be these two shown here. As you can see, they connect up to the gate of each of the MOSFETs. Okay, so I inserted those two resistors right here on the perf board. Next up, I have two of these 12 volt Zener diodes. The side of the Zener diode that has the black ribbon is going to be this side on the circuit. And so using that black ribbon, you can orient them the way they need to go. Notice on both the Zener diodes, the side without the black ribbon is going to be connected up to the negative, while the side with the black ribbon is going to be connected up to each respective gate of each MOSFET. Okay, so now as you can see, I've added on those two Zener diodes. The next thing we need to add are these two 10,000 ohm resistors. As you can see on the circuit, these two resistors go side by side with the Zener diodes. And so, as you can see, I've inserted them into the perf board right next to each center diode. Now, as the last thing to add, I have two of these FR107 ultra-fast diodes. On the schematic, these two diodes are these two guys right here and here. The silver ribbon on these diodes represents this side of the diode on the schematic. Okay, so as you can see, I've put the two diodes onto the perf board just like this. Now, the last thing we need is going to be a way to connect up the flyback transformer to the circuit. And so, for that, I have this three-terminal port that I'm going to put on the board right here. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and solder all the connections on the bottom of this to this schematic I have shown here. And so, I'll be right back with that in a second. Okay, the project is all wired up now. This wire here coming out is my positive, while this wire is my negative. And you can see all the connections I made on the back of this. How the circuit should work is that it should oscillate between each of these MOSFET transistors. And so basically one moment we'll get electricity flowing this way, and the next moment, rather than flowing that way, it'll flow through this side of the coil. Due to the oscillation happening in this coil here, we get a square wave. And that square wave oscillates from a positive voltage to a negative voltage. The changing voltage back and forth induces a current inside of this coil. Since this coil has a lot more turns, the voltage is stepped up by quite a bit. And so on the two terminals coming off of this secondary coil, we should be getting high voltage sparks. The circuit that we've made already is all this stuff up to this point here. This coil part is called a flyback transformer, and they look like this. If you want a flyback transformer like this, you can either buy them on the internet, or you can salvage them out of old CRT TVs. In fact, every single flyback transformer I've ever used, I have salvaged this way. Anyways, to create this primary coil here, I wound some wire along the outside of it with a center tap. Basically, what this center tap means is that in the very middle, I attached another wire going out. As you can see here, on either side of the center, I have five turns of wire. Okay, so now to connect it up, I can take the center tap of my primary coil and put it into this terminal I added here. And then I can put one of the other wires on this terminal, and the last wire from that primary coil is going to go to this terminal here. This red wire that comes out of the top here is going to be one end of our high voltage coil. Then the other end of the high voltage coil will be one of these pins down here. In order to figure out which pin it is, I like to take this high voltage end and bring it down here and see which one it arcs to best. Anyways, this should be everything, so let's cross our fingers and plug it in and see if it generates an arc. In order to give my circuit power, I'm going to be using this DC power supply. Now this power supply can go from 0 to 32 volts DC and can supply a maximum of 10 amps. Okay, I'm going to crank up the voltage.
And as you can see, we're getting an arc of electricity at these 12 volts, it's drawing around 2.5 amps. I'm going to go ahead and give the circuit a bit more power now until it maxes out the 10 amps. But before I do that, I'm going to put on my rubber gloves to ensure that I'm more safe. Okay, I'm going to crank up the power a bit now. Okay, let's try stretching out the arc. As you can see, this arc is extremely dangerous. It's very high voltage. I estimate this to be around 60,000 volts, but as you can see, the plasma it generates is extremely hot, so this will work perfect for our arc lighter. For the terminals it's going to be arcing to, I made this spark cap a while back. This spark cap is made out of two doorknobs attached to these brackets here. The arc should jump across this and then rise up a bit, so we have a nice little flame. Okay, I have the high voltage coil attached to both ends of this. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Right now it's only drawing 3.8 amps with that short of an arc. However, this plasma arc burns at insanely hot temperatures, so anything that comes in contact to it will instantly ignite into flames. And since hot air is more conductive, the arc will rise to the top, making it easier to burn things. Now watch the plasma arc when I blow onto it. When I blow onto it, it dissipates the hot air, making it jump all over the place and give you that nice purple corona look. Okay, so now let's give it a test with roasting marshmallows. Well, I'd say it does its marshmallow roasting job quite well. Okay, so after running it for about 8 minutes straight, the circuit over here is kind of cool. However, the wires that I wound around that flyback transformer have begun melting. So my thought is it would probably be better to use higher gauge wire for this. But if you're only intending it on using it as an arc lighter like I am, you'll only be using it for short intervals anyways, so I don't think I am going to do that. Anyway, so now you know how to make your very own powerful arc lighter. Please remember guys, the arc generated by this is not only insanely hot and will burn your skin very easily, but it also has an extremely high voltage and a dangerous amount of current drawn through that high voltage. So in other words, if some of you do try this at home, please be very, very careful. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see my weekly science videos, go and hit the subscribe button so you'll get them in your subscription newsfeed. That's all that I have for this video, so please remember to be safe and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode, we're going to show you how you can get electrical current out of a crystal.